Hey DF crew, I've been concerned about my RTX 4070 Ti's obsolescence in the next few years. I recently watched a YouTuber called Daniel Owen uh, video on 12 gigabyte GPUs VRAM usage and saw that several titles with RT and frame gen uh, on went above the 12 gigabyte frame buffer. Will this be another RTX 3070 situation where the GPU is capable but is held back by, by VRAM uh, amount slash bandwidth? Cheers! Exclamation point. Interesting point, Alex. I just actually Googled the video that uh, was being referred to here by Neo Tokyo. Uh, a lot of Nixis games in there. <laughs> right. Um, what do you make of this? I don't know what Daniel... I haven't watched Daniel Owen's video here, so I don't want to say anything wrong. But if it, if you're just looking at a game uh, about the amount of VRAM it uses on something like a 4090 or 7900 XTX, you won't get an appreciation of what that actually means for performance when it is limiting. So a good way to do that would be... It's an, and it's even not the best way. would be a 4060 uh, Ti, right? S yeah versus the 8 gigabytes versus the 16 gigabyte version and then you'd see what its effect is on in games uh switching on and off settings and or just running the same thing twice and i feel like that is the best way to do it because you'll see either visual differences and a performance differences the amount of i've discovered over the years is the amount of vram being used by a game is not indicative of the performance or the visual effect. So, cause games will cache things, they will uh, consume VRAM with no purpose. They will do, they will have memory leaks. There's a lot of reasons why they won't actually be using the VRAM in any sort of noticeable visual performing way. Okay, so mm -hmm. there's that. The second thing is games have settings. Uh, you, should, yes. you should be comfortable with turning them down. Not every setting actually matters for visuals uh, if, it, if the performance is great. Uh, and the last thing is, I don't know if I would use Nixie's ports as a great example anymore for the be-all and end-all of uh, video memory performance in games. They are a particular example of them. You know, they, they created a specific system to utilize system memory that... Uh, stretches the PCIe bus with the user not knowing necessarily that is the thing that is limiting the performance it seems. And so people make choices there about texture quality or even uh, memory decisions that are a bit uninformed. And I feel like their, their ports are going to have to improve in that way. So maybe that'll improve and change in the future. But I feel like now 12 gigabytes at 1440p with reasonable settings uh, are going to be really good for a long time. I think that is going to be fine, but I do not want to promise if you put on like path tracing and frame gen yep. uh, that you will be perfect because I know those things are consuming more memory. So I would also, yeah, I do wish it was 16. I do wish it was 16. Yeah, I'm just taking a look at Daniel's video here. It's really comprehensive. It starts with the Nixis games, um, Ghost of Tsushima and uh, Horizon Forbidden West, goes on to Hellblade 2 at 1080p, 1440p, a range of settings there. Same with Avatar, Alan Wake 2, Cyberpunk, um, including uh, RT Overdrive, um, Resident Evil 4. That was a bit of a weird one in terms of <laughs> textures back in the day. That was a dumb one, yeah. Uh, yeah, Starfield, Call of Duty. I think, um, yeah, yeah. Daniel's top uh, video looks looks pretty comprehensive to me. The, there's some interesting comparisons there between the 7700 XT, which is a 12 gig card, and the RX 6800 non XT, which is a 16 gig card. Right. Um, mm. So that's an interesting way to do the comparison. Another one could be simply to take a 16 gig card, and I believe you can actually allocate memory in windows that basically blocks it out from games hmm. which might be another way forward to take a look at this i think you're quite right though alex in that um ultimately you want settings to have you know to address not just today's games but the sorry hardware but the hardware of the future and but that doesn't necessarily mean that using high textures rather than ultra textures is actually going to deliver a quantifiably worse experience especially during the run of play 
Um, so, you know, it, it is always a case of marshalling your resources on PC ports and, you know, tweaking the settings to get best results. It might not be best of the best results, but for now, I think 12 gigs is, is a pretty good place to be for 1440p. I, I would concur with you on that one. Mm -hmm. you have anything to add on that, Oliver? Um, yeah, I think it depends on the engine. Because in this case, right. the more Unreal Engine, the better. Because <laughs> the engines scale VRM differently, right? Some do it more elegantly than others. Mm. Um, I also they think do. people people do need to play with their settings, like Alex said. But I also would say that the vast majority of PC GPUs have 12 gigabytes or less of VRM, and people are targeting those PCs. And many of them have 8 gigabytes of VRM, and obviously that's a bit of a problem, but most games can run just fine at it reasonable settings at reasonable resolutions on gpus with 8 gigabytes of ram you might not be able to turn up the texture settings to the maximum unlike the last of us but you should be able to get get, get a good experience and also most console games are using you know in the vicinity of 12 gigs or somewhere less of VRAM yeah that's a not. good point yeah mm -hmm. so if the console games are being developed around 12 gigs of vram or 12 and a half or 11 and a half or whatever people are tending to allocate then why would comparable PC GPUs with a similar amount of VRAM not be acceptable? I think probably that should be fine throughout the generation, unless the PC ports are just coming in and, and not doing their job and allocating that RAM correctly. So mm -hmm. yeah, in general, I think it's probably not going to be much of an issue. And yeah, reported VRAM use and actual performance issues can be quite different things depending on the circumstance as well. Yeah. Daniel's uh, methodology is quite interesting. It's basically to look at average FPS and 1% lows. The 1% low idea is actually really good because, mm -hmm. um, you know, stutter is generally caused when, uh, well, one cause of stutter is uh, swapping textures in and out of memory across the PCIe bus, which you've noted several times in your content, Alex, can be problematic if there's constrained PCIe bandwidth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hellblade 2. Yeah, and as well as Ghost of Tsushima, where Ghost of Tsushima, it's like more like a constant issue, but in Hellblade, it's like periodic moments in the campaign where it happens. Yeah, uh, I'm actually a little bit curious about why it is that way in Hellblade 2, given the Unreal Engine there. Um, hmm, I don't know.